are those cheeks? So nice and rosy. We won't be like that much longer. You can count on it. A penny, my darling. Please, just one penny. My dame, please. The Lord will be Hello. for your kindness. Hmm. You're a fighter, aren't you? What are Oh, does he now? Good old Miller and his silver tuck. Now he has found himself a lackey to do his dirty work for him. Let's make this short. I'll keep the key. No idea what he told you, but it wasn't the truth. Because if it were, you sure as fuck wouldn't be here. Milbert. I'm sure he told you about the raid in our village, didn't he? Well, there's one thing he didn't tell you. Bloody flesh muggers. After those they fuckers killed our parents everywhere. and tried to break into our house, he left me behind. Took all the valuables Tito's he could carry, just flesh. ran away. Yeah, if I hadn't it. managed to flee, he wouldn't have shed a fucking tear for me. But since fate was so kind to me, things turned out differently. I made it out alive and walked all the way to Ark, where I thought he was. So... You'd think he was glad to see me when I found him in these tunnels, wouldn't you? Well, you're wrong. He let me sleep in the room he paid for from our parents' money, but made me feel as if it was a privilege. And guess what? That hasn't changed until today. Yes, he pays for my room in the barracks, but that's about it. Work, work, work. Shame they passed away. Yes, but they were <sighs> huh. As much as I hate to say it, you might have a point there. But it's just yeah, that should be fuck it. Alright then. I hit the key in one of the barrels close to the entrance to the pit. Yeah, of peace, it's not like there's much money left why is, anyway. Why is that stuff so just expensive? Do whatever is necessary. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's what I'd call myself. 
Even though I'd wager those fine misers and dames of the sickle would disagree. Let me put it this way. If you're looking for equipment, I'm sure I'll have a thing or two which might pique your interest. And I'm not averse to a good find of yours. Borrowed items? I'm not sure what you mean. Travels. What? Sun child. As you like. Travels. Hmm? As you like. Travels. As you like. Safe travels. The light fit. It's a wet.
What? Potatoes, As you garlic, like. Like radish. Yeah, that should be it. Safe travels. Mm -hmm. Teolora Renthial has returned after yeah. all these years. What do you want? Malfas truly smiles upon us. Work, work, work. What? Welcome Did to the Jewel of the Undercity. Yeah, How may I be here? of service? Be mm -hmm. wary. Evening. What? What do you want? To cock at me? My damn. That's a nice dress you're wearing there, son child. I'd be careful. Some people down here would kill what? for something like that. <laughs> Fair enough. Maybe there's a trick or two I could show you. But trust me, they don't come cheap. Yes, yes, just move along, will you? A sun child, huh? Word of advice don't go sauntering about dark alleys down here and watch your pockets. is due. My sir, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm so the hungry. The haven't been kind to us. Do you want protection? Yes, 
Yes, of, of course, my sir. Path. We want protection. Then pay. We're keeping our end of the bargain. Now it's your turn. As if I had a bloody choice. Now a good pipe of peace, man. Jesus, why is that stuff so expensive? Forgive me for my insolence, my sir. You'll have the money by tomorrow. See? It can be so simple.
Yes. Mm -hmm. Walk blessed, madame. <clears throat> Evening. A foreigner, huh? What a surprise. So, that was him. Uh, don't ask. That bad. That smelled like booze and broke down crying while we were at it. Probably had a companion up in the city or something. A Dalveret character. The mercenary. Now that's what I call a man. Polite, clean, witty. Oh, well, you can't have it all. At least you didn't have to deal with that poet yet. Poet? I could imagine worse. I'm talking about Prince Mick. Oh, him. Yeah, him. Honestly, if he ever reads me one of his sonnets again, I can't guarantee for anything. Ever tried plugging your ears? Wouldn't he notice? <laughs> I doubt that. Just flash a smile and applaud every now and then. If you say so. Trust me. Give it a try. My... my dam, you look as though you have a kind heart. Please, spare a penny for me. Child, you stop right there. Hand over your money, and we might let you live. Play the hero, and well, you fill in the blanks. I, but Logan, don't. This is a bad idea. But the shadow tax. We'll find another way. Come on. In a bed, sorry.
This is, damn it, this is mm. ridiculous. Is it important? It's cool. Mmm, a real pretty thing machine. you are. We should spend some time together. Oh, let the flesh maggots have you. May your path always be even, my dame. What? I don't see how that concerns you. Don't you have some theatre play to attend to, Sunchild? Help me? Well, I doubt that. That is unless you have a pouch with 300 pennies to give away. Oh, and maybe two sheaves of God's tongue to go with it. I need the new herbal essence for my hair. I... I don't know. I'm sorry. You seem like an upright kind of fellow, but I can tell you're from the surface. And I'm just having a hard time believing a sun child actually cares about my problems. You're really nosy. You know that. But fine. What bad can it do? That son of a virtue over there, Cabal Thorwall. He's the only merchant in the Undercity who still has Vinroot in his stocks. But since he knows that, he sells it for a price that would have upper city snobs running away, screaming. Well, and if the Apothecary in the Pest House doesn't get new roots soon, the infected they treat there will start dying like flies within a day. Sure, by day. And by night, I work as the Grandmaster's personal Kalean dancer. <laughs> Jokes aside, nah, I'm just an errand girl. But down here, having paid work is already something to feel blessed for. <laughs> they good, and they do. Aye, but that's by far not enough. Especially since the cloister of the League up north has been snowed in for moons now. And as noble as their intentions are, they only have so much coin without their League backing them up. You're no alchemist, are you? <laughs> Aye. Red vine root is the only thing that can help get those flesh maggots out of an infected body. I repeat, can. Even with a proper treatment, most people don't make it through. Of course he does. But he sees an opportunity to get rich quick, and so he uses it. He's always been like that. Maybe you could, hi. Huh? I guess it'll be worth a shot. We need at least ten sheaves so that the Apocathery can make use of them. And I don't want to seem ungrateful, but don't expect to get anything in return for your help. Huh? Well, fine then. Good luck. Hmm? Is it important? Oh, by the name of the sun. Won't this ever stop? Tell Nathalia, the apothecary, or whoever sent you that the price stays. It does, actually, yes. But it does not change the fact that I need to live somehow, too. And that 300 per sheaf is already a fair price. Go on. Ask those upper city merchants. You're lucky if they sell it below 500. <sighs> Listen. I know exactly what you think. This ruthless bastard, how greedy, how evil, and so on and so forth. But that's not how it is, believe me. So, back to business. Are you looking for supplies? If not, just shove off. Yeah, now that's a surprise. I expected a speech. Here you go. Pleasure doing business with you. Mm, now there's a treat for the eye. What do you say, darling? Huh? Want to spend some time together? Blazes? You're serious? Where? On second thought, bet I don't ask. Thank you, Sunchild. You saved a lot of lives today. A bloody wench thinks she's vibe to incarnate. Now she'll get what's coming to her soon.
Help. Please. Walk blessed. Help. Are you ill? Forgive me, but I don't have time for chit-chat. Can't you tell? We're seeing to the ill and the weak. The ones nobody else cares about. Most of them caught the flesh maggots. Though it's a bit hard to heal without coin to afford herbs or potions. Ah, well, I digress. Sorry. Donations, mostly. Some of them come from relatives, some from nobles who want to ease their conscience a little. Though, our biggest patron is the Golden Sickle. Burns. Yes, say what you want about old Daloran, but he's a path-abiding man. Without him, this place would have gone to the rats long ago. My thoughts? What do you want me to say? They're pathless criminals. That much is for sure. Anyone unable to pay their shadow tax ends up either down here with some broken limbs or... Worst case scenario, right in the corpse pit. They don't charge us apothecary much, but I doubt they're doing that out of the goodness of their hearts. The ill cannot work, and who cannot work is unable to pay the shadow tax. So, they have an interest in keeping our place running. Oh. What? Who are you? What? Who are you? Have you heard the news about the Magister? Word has it that he murdered 30 novices, then killed himself. Hey! You're an adventurer! Or... <sighs> By mouth, has you been to... of this world? Oh, how do they say it? Melee? My dad told me that's where the pet. Curious one, aren't you? I hate to say it, but a good greater never reveals his secret, son child.
Would you look at that? Isn't this nice? A sun child graces us with its presence. Conduct yourself, will you? This isn't the upper city.
keep walking. Huh, look at that. A fellow traveler. Stay on the roads. Evening. You have? Well, sure. Let me see. Or tell me what you need. Let me see. Or tell me what you need. I don't know. Somewhere else? Walk blessed.
Walk bless. You have? Well, sure, let me see. Or tell me what you need. Walk bless. An outlander. What are you... ...wing in this part of the city? Shouldn't you be... Uh, I don't know, somewhere else? Never walk back on the road from the aged man's of <laughs> We oh, always go places. too easy. Sorry.
I know. I can't sing. Walk blessed. Fabulous, my dame, please. The Lord will redeem you for your kindness. Some people just don't know their path. Son Childer, I bet you came to watch those fools cut their guts open in the dust pit. Well, that's the only reason you snobs ever come down here. Move along. Would you look at that? A visitor from the surface. Want a word of advice? to share her.
Why are you stopping? I'm busy. Go pester someone else, will you? Wait a moment. Now listen up, pal. No matter what your son children oh, might think, even down here, area. there are rules. If you pay a tribute for your crimes, I'll let you go. If not, <laughs> you don't want to know. I cut a lot more than throats. If you keep on acting smart, you'll find out. Just know that I'm part of something big. Something you don't want to get on the wrong side of. Fine, then you'll repent in another way. Come with me, and no tricks. Why are you stopping? An obulus, my dame, please. The Lord will redeem you for your kindness. From the upper city, huh? You got guts walking around with all that stuff down here. So many what? fights, so little money. Guy. Come on! Fucking piece of shit! <sighs> you pay for that. What? <laughs> yes? Grand Marasha's home for lost kittens. Honestly, if you need to ask, then you sure as fuck don't belong here. Go back to your bathing houses and galleries, son child. Ooh, how eloquent. You're from the surface, aren't you? No, don't say anything, I can tell. No cave dweller gets that much sun on his pretty face. So, you want to fight, huh? Oh, you're the sneaky type, aren't you? That look in your eyes. The constant twitching of her fingers. Oh, I can tell. Fine. Why not? I don't care about style. As long as you can fight. You do know that we're not doing tumbles down here, right? If you fight well, you can make a lot of money fighting here. But if you don't, well, you can imagine. Usually, yeah. Sometimes the loser pleads for mercy, but the crowd doesn't like it. Oh sure, sometimes they even come down here and read us quotes from the verses. Jokes aside, I couldn't care less about what the Order does or doesn't know. Down here, the rules are different. Well, for what it's worth... I don't particularly enjoy seeing some baby-faced boy have his head taken from his shoulders, either. But these are the rules. And if the stakes weren't as high, everybody would join the party in hopes for treasure. And frankly, for some people, the pit offers a chance at something they wouldn't find elsewhere. The chance for a better life. But I don't think you as a sun child would understand. Huh. Alright. First of all, you'll need to sign this, though. 
If you can read and write, sign with your name. If not, with a cross. Thank you. Then we can start right away. And, ah, one more thing. I always found this a bit silly. But the crowd always wants a name they can shout to the ring when you're bashing someone's head in. You know, the fighter, the butcher, stuff like that. So, what do you want? Uh, great. Really. Fair enough. If you want, you can dive right into the ring. There'll be a pack fight in a couple of hours. Yeah. Also called Last Man Standing Wins. Three to six fighters in the ring. Dog eat dog. Well, that depends on the bets. So I can't tell you yet. But if you win, huh, it'll be well worth it. Eager, aren't you? Good. Just go down to the training dummies. I'll call you when we begin. Madam and Macers, a cordial welcome to the Dust Pit. You know who I am, I know who you are, and above all, I know why you are here today. Because you want to see a fight! Today, there are four rookies in the ring, and they all share the same dream, to become the champion of the arena. Oh, can you see them shiver, the sweat glistening on their foreheads? They are afraid, and rightfully so, because they know only one of them will leave the pit on both legs. Maydam and Maysers, I proudly present Kata Tanner's daughter, called the Storm. Simael Roth, called the Vagabond. And Thomas Shagar, also known as the Derwin. And last but not least, the unknown warrior who is only known by her moniker, the Death Viper. Now, enough of the words. Fight! Walking. You know the rules, Rasha. If we don't get the money until tomorrow, there will be consequences. So handle it. But... Fine. I'll see what I can do. Good girl. Relata Shera. <laughs> well fought. Come to bed. Talk to Rasha. Come on. So many fights, so little money. Fucking pieces. Uh huh. Now I just put them out for you to look at. Tell me what you need, and be quick about it. Hmm? 
What do you want? <coughs> well fought, really. Here's your share. Pardon my language, but none of your fucking business. Just remember your training. Well, aren't you a piece of work? Still got blood and dust on your skin and already begging for the next battle. Come by in a couple of days and ask again, will you? I got things to take care of. You've come at the right time. There's a fight soon, and you're the perfect candidate. Two versus one. Interested? The twins. Two nasty, hairy beasts of men with even nastier axes. Yeah, I know, the odds are against you, but what should I say? The crowd wants it, I deliver. What do you say? Oh, yeah. But judging by how you fought, I think you stand a chance. Still. It'll be dangerous. So, what do you say? Bold words. All right, then go downstairs and warm up. I'll tell you when we're ready. Madame and mes sirs, a cordial welcome to the Dust Pit. You know who I am, I know who you are, and above all, I know why you are here today. Because you want to see a fight? Today, two familiar faces will fight a rookie, who you've already grown to love. The twins against the mysterious warrior only known as... The Death Viper! It is a battle to the death, a battle about gold and blood. Now enough of the words! Time to give you what you've all been waiting for! Warriors, fight! What do you want? Ah, sure. Sorry. I was... elsewhere. Here's your share. <laughs> well deduced, detective. His shadow tribute, which my esteemed father, who rediscovered his juvenile spite in his last years, refuses to pay. Which, in return, means that the nice guy who just paid me a visit will send us some of Relata's goons to either set fire to our establishment, or send my father onto the Eternal Paths a couple of years earlier, if I don't think of something. Protection money. If you want to stay alive down here, you have to pay. You have no idea how the wind blows down here, do you? Thanks for the offer, but no. Only an utter idiot would take on the Relata. Two or three days, give or take. Oh, I know you'd love to jump right back in. But if we start doing battles every bloody minute, the crowd will lose interest. And money. Just swing by in a couple of days, alright? You'll get your fight.
look at that. You have a talent for showing up when you're needed, you know that? There's a fight coming up, and I want you to participate. Gu Halnan. He's been fighting for a while now. A brute in heavy armor. With a couple of... how should I say... special techniques he picked up in his homeland, Arazil. I won't lie, he'll be a tough nut to crack. Aren't you, Eager? You know the drill. Go downstairs and warm up. The fight will take place in a couple of hours. Madam and may sirs, a cordial welcome to the Dust Pit! You know who I am, I know who you are, and above all, I know why you are here today. Because you want to see a fight? Today, there is something special on the menu. Or should I say, something savage? Because this is a word that best describes the beast our still undefeated rookie must stand his ground against. Madam and may sirs, I present... Gur Halnan, the Berserker of the Steps, versus the Death Viper! Shed some blood, warriors! Fucking piece of shit! <sighs> you would pay for that. to hand it to you. You're really starting to impress me. I didn't think you'd stand a chance against old Gurr. Kinda sad to see him gone, but eh, he knew the risks. Here's your share. Come back in two days or so. This time it'll be exciting. The Ringmaster plans to pair you with Raga Shadowclaw. <laughs> no, but you will soon. She's an alchemist. Small tip from my side, don't let her tender appearance fool you. You'll see why. Aren't you, Eager? You know the drill. Go downstairs and warm up. The fight will take place in a couple of hours.
Keep walking. Look who's back. Not bad, not bad. I was expecting you to pee your pants after she did that little trick of hers. But no, you kept your cool as usual. Sure you don't want to start working as a mercenary? You could make more money that way. Either way, here's your pay. Hmm? What do you want? I had hoped you'd ask that. Aye, I do. And this time, you're in for a real challenge. No. If you're man enough, you'll fight the beast tonight. Aye, the pride of the pit. And the good thing about it, even if you hack it to shreds, all we need to do is give it some elixir and have our necromancer stick it back together, and it's as good as new. I won't lie, though. It'll be hard this time, and chances are you won't make it out alive. If you do make it, though, it'll be worth your time. Something like that, aye. But let's not dwell on the details, shall we? All right, I'll wait. But don't take too long. Come to bed. Yeah? Talk to Ryan. No, I just put them out for you to look at. Tell me what you need, and be quick about it. Uh-huh. Now, I just put them out for you to look at. Tell me what you need, and be quick about it.
Yes. Thought so. Well then. But can the Death Viper also oppose the beast that's been soaking this soil in blood for decades? We shall see. Unleash the beast! See you dance, Death Viper. Look out! Good. That's enough. Let's talk. Fair enough. This is better. Forgive me my dramatic entrance. I was just about to explain. I'm Thero Naris, voice of the Father. I've been watching you for a while now because I'm looking for someone with your set of skills. And, uh, our little encounter down in the pit erased the last doubts I had about you. Hmm, that accent. You're an outlander, aren't you? Shit. Does that mean I have to explain who the Rolada is to you? Right. The Rolata is more than a bunch of criminals, though. But we'll get there. Regarding your original question, the voices are the military arm of the Rolata. I'm sure you've seen some of us before, we come into play when a matter needs a strong hand to resolve itself. Indeed. Let me get straight to the point. I want to hire you for a mission. Well... You look like someone willing to slaughter other people in front of a gawking crowd for a handful of coins. At least that's what you did down there. Don't get me wrong, I don't judge. The pit fighters know what they're getting themselves into. But after what I saw you do down there, I concluded that you're willing to do a lot of things if the pay is right. Or am I wrong? I see. How refreshing that you sun children always find new, fun ways to kill time. But even if it's just a thrill you're seeking, you'll find it on the mission I'm offering you. Tenfold. Well, actually, it's simple. I want your help in killing someone. The father. Their leader. Not mine. When I was six years old, the Relata abducted me and a dozen other children. That is, they bought us. Shagun, the old cunt who owned our orphanage, she sold us like cattle. Us, and over the years, at least a dozen more. And we all came from the same orphanage. 
the <laughs> refuge. A nun. I have no idea what they did to us. I remember nothing. Yes. Why? Well, probably because the father shoved an ingot of gold up her ass for every child she sold. But the flesh maggots got her a while ago. So she took her reasons to the grave with her. That's the big question, isn't it? At first I thought it was about child trafficking. You know, tender little knaves and girls for rich bastards. Ox bigwigs. Yet now I've come to the conclusion that it must have been about science. Experiments. Only the father. As I said, I'm pretty sure you have the wrong idea about them. The Relata doesn't see itself as a guild of murderers, but as a faith. A sect. A cult, in other words. The blackmailing, the shadow tax. It's how they finance the little community. That the uh, physical body is the worst thing that ever happened to man. It's a hole that needs to transcend. But we digress. If we're to work together, you'll soon have some rogue cultists telling you all this shit anyway. Kind of. After the father was done with us, he simply disposed of our corpses. This is also the first memory I have of that time after the abduction. Waking up in a pile of dead bodies. I don't know exactly, but I must have been somewhere between 12 to 14 years old. Still half a child, in other words. As you can imagine, I was a... I was a mess for the first few moons after that. Once I was able to think somewhat straight again, I looked for help in the upper city. Of course, the guards didn't believe a word of what I said and sent me right back down into the caverns. No. And frankly, it doesn't surprise me. I'm sure hundreds of ragged kids from the Undercity had come to them before, telling them horror stories about how much they suffered down there only to get a bed and some food. Also, as you may have figured out by now, the Order doesn't have any power down here. The Relata controls the caves, and that's how it will stay. Correct. Let's put it this way. I came to realize that no matter how much I cursed and cried, nobody would come to my help. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. I told myself how to survive, and how to fight. And years later, I entered the dust pit for the first time. One of the voices saw how well I could fight, and offered me to study the Relas. Their Codex, their Holy Scripture, written by the Father himself. I shaved my head and became a Scion, the lowest rank. Eight years ago. The Father doesn't bother with most Relame, especially not with the Scions. Also, when they discarded me, I was still a child. Now, I'm a man. Revenge. Yes. I want this monster to pay for what he did to me and the others. And I want to make sure that it will never hurt anyone again. Ever. One of the core beliefs of the Relata concerns the Day of Transcendence. It's the day when every Relame who's ever proven him or herself worthy leaves their body to continue existing as an immortal, immaterial being. And they also believe that this day is imminent since the father found a way to achieve transcendence for himself and for his lambs. In the weeks to come, it will set out an expedition to the Frostcliff Mountains. Since this expedition will be an extremely dangerous undertaking, he will bring along almost a dozen of the best mercenaries available. You will be one of them, and together, we will kill the father. I'm telling you this because I need someone who knows how to kill. Better than the usual cutthroat you find down here. And you seem to be that someone. Also, there's something about you. I can't say what, but I feel as though you're the right person for the job. Let's leave it at that. Well, let's put it this way. I took precautions. 
you don't have the guts to help me, your choice, but... <laughs> Believe me, if you do try to backstab me, you'll regret it. No. You either agree now, or the offer's off the table. I can't afford to lose any more time. Well, the Relata spent the last... two years excavating an old temple that apparently was lost in the glacier for centuries. Ah, uh, according to the father, this is where we'll find the key to achieve transcendence, but that's about all I know. Well, I can pay you 400 pennies now, and 800 more once the father is dead. Also, think of all the riches that we'll find in the temple itself, or in the Relata's treasure chambers. It will be worth it, you can trust me on that. By doing something that impresses him. As you can imagine, the Relata already has its stock of cell swords they rely on. But if we do something that impresses the father or the first seer, it might be enough to convince him to hire you. Look, I know how shaky it sounds, but it's our best bet. So, are you with me or not? It will be. Meet me at the Wailing Tree, two hours from now. Ah, uh, and, uh, here. This will help you get back to the Undercity in case you need to return to the surface before our meeting. Stay safe.
bloody rats. Eating the last penny right out your pocket. My son child, uh, I bet you came to watch those fools. There you are. Ready? Tree. Oh. Yeah, sure. The people down here call it the Weeping Tree. They believe that the Black Guardian, once a year, fulfills one of the wishes they write onto these notes. Superstitious nonsense, of course. They might as well send their wishes to the Blue Island Coalition. Maybe. Ready to set out? <laughs> what do you think? Because we don't want to draw any attention. If somebody sees me walking around with you, it won't be the end of the world. But I don't want to cause unnecessary problems. First a question. Have you ever heard of the Night of the Blind Daughters? A massacre that took place 20 years ago. It was at the farmer's coast, around midsummer. The farmers had just put out the lights after a long day's work. Suddenly, shrouded figures showed up out of nowhere, with steel masks covering their faces. They broke into the houses, and killed anybody who dared to stand in their way. And while they merely wrecked havoc on most of the farms, any family with a daughter between 12 and 16 winters was less lucky. All in all, these masked people took ten daughters that night and carried them away. They were found, one week later. They lay on the Penny Road, mutilated with their eyes sewn shut. One girl, each mile. They tried, but the few farm boys who were there in time stood no chance. These masked attackers were assassins, as deadly as the petrified and as brutal as lost ones. To this very day, no one knows. However, there are theories. Do the names of Black Lieber and J. L. Tannison ring a bell? The Butcher of Ark? Yes. Thing is, in this book he left behind, Tannison claims to have been part of a cult called the Black Libra. Even nowadays there are still scholars that deny its existence. But according to Tannison, they see themselves as some kind of... Uh, counterbalancing power. They make sure that malice and sin, they don't gain the upper hand in this world, and that the scales of good and evil thus stay in balance. Well, this is where it gets bizarre. Normally, the Libra only kills people who have already sinned. Tyrants, rapists, murderers, and so on. Which is also why the attack on the farmer's coast didn't make any sense, and still doesn't for most people today. However, the father has a theory. Well, he does have an avid interest in them. Let's put it this way. He has dug up every little bit of information that there is. But we'll come to that later. According to the father, the Black Libra chooses their sinners through the dreams of some kind of... the Holy Child. The dreams are interpreted by the Libra's priests, who extract the names and faces of evildoers from them. However, the child doesn't just see people who have already sinned. She also sees evil in its inception. Thus, the Libra might decide to kill a boy before he becomes a tyrant, 
or a girl before she gives birth to a murderer. I know, it sounds insane, but that's what it is. But apparently the Libra fully believes in this principle. The child is omniscient. Yes. So it would seem, though according to the father, they wouldn't have just been ordinary murderers, but emissaries of the end. Whatever that may mean. Simple. The father believes that the Black Libra knows the secret to transcendence. This is why he's been studying Tennyson's books like a madman. Especially one in particular, in which he describes the initiation ritual he underwent to become one of their assassins. And I also think that this temple in the Frostcliff Mountains is somehow related to the Libra. Long story short, apparently the pages of Tannison's original manuscript describing the initiation ritual in detail are forcefully torn out, and the father wants to find them. Right. And I happen to know the only person who might be able to tell us their whereabouts. A man named Collian. He was also an assassin of the Libra, and Tannison's mentor. In other words, an unscrupulous piece of shit that did nothing but murder people for decades. Guilty, the innocent alike. According to the father, he was also the one who orchestrated the Night of the Blind Daughters. However, that massacre seems to have been too much even for his rotten conscience to bear, because he left the Libra shortly thereafter. He took on a new identity been living as a beggar in the Undercity ever since. <laughs> I saw him once. It's no wonder that nobody knows what kind of monster he is. He's gone completely insane. Drinks away every penny he gets his hands on. I have my sources. Let's leave it at that. Maybe, yes. Exactly. If we bring them to the first seer and I tell him how I couldn't have done it without you, he might consider hiring you for the expedition. That's the plan. Not the best one, certainly, but um, all we're getting. Then we'll need to improvise. Let's just hope he doesn't come to that. He currently lives in the communes. That is, if he isn't in some horse bed in the Silver Cloud right now or getting hammered in the false dark. I'll let you do the talking. It's unlikely that the first seer will find out, but the more you actually help me on this mission, the more convincing our little story will be. Ah, and, uh, one more thing. Don't go easy on that scum. He might seem harmless now, but remember what he's done. And remember that those ten mutilated girls on the Penny Road are just one more page in this man's book of sins. <laughs>